welcome to my video about the people of the buffalo, also known as the plains people. The plains people have a lot of interesting facts about them, and that's why I decided to put them all in this video. I don't know what you'll be learning, but I hope you'll learn a little bit about the people of the buffalo. They have a lot of interesting facts about them that I'm going to share with you in this video, so please enjoy. The plains people were obviously located in the plains, where else would they be since they are called the Plains People? The Plains People were in the Great Plains near the Rocky Mountains, Mississippi River, and Saskatchewan River. The picture I'm showing you now is a great diagram of where they would be. They are half Canadian and half American. They're in the half Canadian, half American parts. The Plains people were a mixture of Plains Cree and Plains Ojibwe. Plains people would live in these houses called teepees. Teepees were a mixture of the buffalo hides around 8 to 10 sticks. Around, I think, 2 to 4 natives would live in these teepees at a time. There was a big hole in the roof just so they could have fires on the inside. On the inside of these teepees were furs and hides for the ground. They would have a kettle pot in the middle of it so they could cook their uh, pentagon and any kind of other things that they would eat. Pretty, pretty snazzy. I'd live in that. Plains people main diet consist of buffalo. Now, of course, they would have the occasional, you know, nuts, berries, and occasional other foods, but buffalo was the main. Since they lived in the plains, buffalo were very easy to come by, but whatever they killed, they did not go to waste. The way they would kill the buffalo is that they would, some of them would actually dress up in furs and scare the herd from the side. The buffalo would be so spooked, they would run, and they wouldn't know where they're going. Some would wait and hide into the bushes um, in front of a cave or like a cliff area. The buffalo would not know where they were going, and when they ran close enough, the people who were hiding would jump up and start screaming like loud men. That would drive the buffalo over the cliff, falling to their deaths at the rocks below. Pretty sad if you ask me, but if... I was a native person, that's probably what I would have to do for food and survival. When the Europeans first started coming to North America, they brought with them the horse. The horse was a very new thing to the Native Americans. They did not know what it was or uh, what it could do. But when the Europeans started unloading horses, some horses escaped from their pens, which led to them being roaming around in the plains. The plains people took advantage of this and started capturing these wild horses and training them in the ways that they hunted with them. So the Europeans had their horses that were trained, and then the natives had the wild horses. This made buffalo hunting a lot easier for the natives, because the horse was way faster than their own running feet. But they still hunted the same old way, by having the buffalo jump off the cliff, but horses made it a lot easier to shoot with their bows and arrows, and for chasing the herds. My, they were very creative. Plains people were very open to the uh, Europeans coming into the lands. They would show them the ways, offer food, and make some houses for them. But I don't know if this led to any fighting or any conflict between the Aboriginals and the Europeans. But one thing f is for certain, the Europeans did trade with the 
Aboriginals and they forged the Hudson's Bay Trading Post. The Europeans would not waste any food that they caught. Whatever food they used, they used the whole animal, which includes the tongues of buffalo, from, from the tongues to the horns to the furs to the hides to the hooves. Nothing would go to waste. They took each animal that they killed as a blessing from the gods. They would make soups and uh, a meat known as penny can. Please do not judge if I said that wrong. I'm really sorry. I just can't pronounce that right. But they would cut the buffalo meat into strips and hang them to dry. Then the meat was pounded into shreds with a stone. They would mix it with a hot buffalo fat and berries and pour it into a bag. The bag was then le- the bag of meat was then left to cool and harden. It kind of sounds a little gross to me, but I guess that's what native people liked back in the day. So that's kind of cool. The women would not hunt. The women were more of the berry pickers. They would collect berries and that were eaten and dried were eaten, dried or fresh. They would also make the penny can that I mentioned earlier, which is very cool. In this picture, a native woman is drying the berries that they usually eat or picking them. She looks very happy with her job. In this picture is a woman making a a penny Cam, please do not judge. I've already said before that I might not answer the names all the correctly. But, of course, yes, the women would make the penicum for the dinners and special rituals and feasts. Of course, just like any other native group, the Plains people had their own beliefs and religion. In their youth, the aboriginal people of the Plains tried to make contact with a spirit. It was a coming-of-age ritual, otherwise known as a vision quest. The young person went off alone for many days of fasting and praying. At length, a spirit animal might appear. As, As a spirit animal might appear as if it was a dream. The animal shared some special songs and prayers and showed the youth what, what objects would be sc- scarce for the rest of his or her life. The animal would always remain scarce to the person who has seen it. Some people were closer to spirits than others, that they seemed to be able to call upon the spirit to guide the behalf of the people for guidance. Sometimes they could even use the power to look into the future. These people with special powers were called shamans, Please do not judge if I butchered that name. I'm really sorry, but they were religious leaders of the people. In this picture, I would assume that this would be a shaman. He's holding a feather, and he looks to be talking to the rest of the people on a brown horse. If he's not a shaman, please forgive me because I can't really tell. said many times in this video, buffalo were the plains people's main food. But, legend has it, <laughs> no legend has it, but they actually hunted different foods. They hunted deer, moose, elk, along with wolves, coyotes, lynx, rabbit, rabbits, gophers, and prairie chickens were also hunted for their food. So, I guess I was wrong saying that buffalo was their only food, because I did think that it was, but it turns out buffalo is their main food, not their only food, which, that's a pretty cool fact to know. When the Europeans started arriving to otherwise known as what they called it, New France, they were fairly skeptical at first with these new animals that they had. But once they started hunting the buffalo, the buffalo started becoming more and more smaller. The buffalo herds started disappearing, and the newcomers, the newcomer, comers, were starting to build r- railways through the plains. This made the buffalo herds 
it made it for harder for the buffalo herds to change to move with the seasons and the hunters that came to the country would kill the buffalo for sport these hunters only wanted the tongues of the animals or their furry hides to make coats the, re the rest of the animals left to rot in the sun in a short time the vast herds of buffalo had disappeared